Welcome to the introduction and video tutorial on greenhouse gas emissions and calculations. We start from understanding greenhouse gases. When we think about global warming, we typically think about carbon dioxide or CO2. Greenhouse gases are referred to as GHGs, are gases in the Earth's atmosphere that can trap heat from the sun, which leads to the greenhouse effect, which is responsible for the Earth's relatively stable and habitable temperature. These gases are critical for maintaining Earth's temperature at the level that can support life, but an excess of certain greenhouse gases can lead to global warming and climate change. Some of the most important greenhouse gases include carbon dioxide, or CO2, methane, or CH4, nutritious oxide, or N2O, fluorinated gases such as refrigerants and others. Greenhouse gas emissions are typically expressed in CO2e, or CO2 equivalents, as a common unit of measurement because different gases have a different impact on global warming, or different global warming potential. So, what do businesses emit? We can roughly break this down to two big categories, direct emissions and indirect emissions. Direct emissions come from something your company actively controls and uses. For example, fuels used for heating buildings, fuel for cars, and etc. Indirect emissions come from activities that support company operations and are outside of your direct control. For example, electricity. While our company uses it, you are not responsible for producing it. Indirect emissions can be further distinguished by upstream, everything you purchase or acquire, and downstream, everything related to sold goods and services. How does a company calculate emissions? The GHG protocol, or greenhouse gas protocol, has been widely adopted and serves as the basis for many greenhouse gas reporting programs and regulations around the world. The protocol is a set of internationally recognized standards and guidelines for accounting and reporting greenhouse gas emissions and provides a framework for organizations to measure, manage, and report their greenhouse gas emissions accurately and consistently. The GHG protocol outlines the principles and methods for measuring and reporting emissions from an organization's activities and categorizes all emissions into three scopes. Direct emissions, or scope one. Emissions from purchase electricity and heat, or scope two. And other indirect emissions, or scope three. But what does scope one, two, and three mean? Let's start with scope one emissions. Scope 1 emissions refer to direct greenhouse gas emissions from sources that the organization has operational control over. The emissions are generated from activities such as combustion of fuels in on-site equipment, vehicles, and industrial processes. Examples include emissions from company-owned vehicles, on-site heating, and use of refrigerants. Next, Scope 2 emissions. Scope 2 emissions are indirect greenhouse gas emissions associated with the generation of electricity, heating, or cooling that an organization purchases or consumes. While the organization does not directly control the sources of these emissions, they are related to the organization's energy consumption. Organizations can influence Scope 2 emissions by choosing to purchase cleaner, renewable energy sources or by improving energy efficiency. And finally, the broadest category, Scope 3 emissions. Scope 3 emissions encompass other indirect emissions that occur because of organizations' activities but are not included under Scope 1 or Scope 2. 
GHG protocol sets 15 categories that fall under scope 3 emissions, and they are typically more challenging to quantify and manage because they extend throughout the organization's value chain, including suppliers, customers, and other stakeholders. Scope 3 emissions can include emissions associated with supply chain activities, business travel, employee commuting, product transportation, and the use of sole products, just to name a few. They represent a significant portion of companies' overall carbon footprint. Measuring and managing them is important for a comprehensive understanding of an organization's environmental impact in terms of GHG emissions and for taking meaningful steps to reduce emissions. Now, why is it important to measure companies' GHG emissions? So there are few important reasons for that. Firstly, environmental responsibility. Currently, climate change is a critical global issue, so companies face pressure from stakeholders, including customers, investors, and regulators to reduce their environmental impact and contribute to mitigating climate change. Regulatory compliance and legal requirements. Within the European Union and elsewhere worldwide, there are many regulatory initiatives aimed at combating climate change, reducing GHG emissions, increasing transparency, accountability to stakeholders, and comparability of results to ensure long-term sustainability. To name a few regulations, the Corporate Social Responsibility Directive, European Sustainability Reporting Standard, the EU Taxonomy, and others. Risk management. Understanding and quantifying greenhouse gas emissions can help companies identify and manage climate-related risks, such as dependencies on emission-heavy resources or changing regulations that may impact their operations. Cost reduction and efficiency. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions often leads to increased efficiency and cost saving. By measuring emissions, companies can identify opportunities to reduce energy consumption, cut operational costs, and improve their bottom line. Similarly, it can lead to innovation in products, processes, and technologies that are more environmentally friendly and can increase an organization's efficiency and resilience. From a practical perspective, you cannot manage what you don't measure. Based on the measurements, or in other words, data, organizations can develop strategies to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, set targets for emission reductions, and report their progress in a standardized and transparent manner. Now we move to explore the GHG emission calculator step by step. The GHG Emission Calculator is a user-friendly tool designed to estimate annual greenhouse gas emissions for small, medium businesses, as well as organizations in general. Its goal is to simplify the process of calculating emissions in Scope 1 and 2. For methodology descriptions, please consult the GHG Calculator guidelines. The calculator is divided into five sheets the introduction, basic information, scope one, scope two, and report, where the results of emissions will be visible. The introduction sheet is a non-active sheet, describes the tool, main aim, provide links to the manual and video tutorial, and point of contact. Basic information sheet is the first active sheet for information input, namely, reporting year, country, and the sector the company operates in. Scope 1 sheet will ask you to input information regarding your stationary, non-stationary, and fugitive emissions. And if your company operates in the agricultural sector, data for agriculture-specific emissions. Scope 2 sheet will ask you to input information regarding your electricity and heating or cooling usage. And finally, the report will show the results of greenhouse gas emissions 
and will not require input of any additional data. And now we move to the calculator itself. Note that using the calculator will require information that you need to gather before starting to fill in the data or during the process of filling in the data. The more real consumption data you have, the more accurate the level of your greenhouse gas emissions. We start at the basic information sheet. You will be asked to input information regarding reporting and your company. This sheet must be filled in. Firstly, we select a reporting year. Here, please select the year for which you want to report the emission data. Note that the reporting is typically done for one calendar year. Select from the drop-down menu. So for example, we choose 2022 as our reporting year we want to calculate emissions for. Select your main country of operations. Here, please select whether your main area of operations is located in Estonia, Latvia or Lithuania. For example, we choose Lithuania. Select your sector. From the drop-down menu list, choose one of the 22 sectors according to the NACE codes in which your company operates. So, for example, we choose transportation. Answer whether you have calculated scope 3 emissions. If you don't, select no, as we have here. If you do, select yes, and another box will appear where you will be able to enter the amount. Enter the amount of the calculated emissions, and below you can also note which categories were covered in your scope 3 emission calculation. Let's say that we did not calculate scope 3 emissions. Once all of this is filled, move to the next sheet, which is scope 1. As discussed earlier, scope 1 emissions are direct emissions from sources controlled or owned by the company. More specifically, in this sheet we will focus on assets that the company manages directly, for example, offices, warehouses, own fleet and refrigerant top-up. We start with stationary emissions and aim to calculate the fuel or fuels that are used for heating buildings or spaces used by the company or for equipment such as generators, appliances and similar. For example, our company operates a warehouse that is heated by natural gas and an office that has a propane furnace. We tick the box and can proceed to enter the yearly consumption level and the unit. We know that in 2022 we used 150,000 cubic meters of natural gas. So we enter the real consumption data. For propane furnace, we don't know how many liters we used, but we know that the office space is 300 square meters. When we don't know the real consumption data, the emissions resulting from this stream will be an estimation, not as accurate. If we did not use any of the indicated fuels, simply leave this section unfilled. It is important to remember that rented facilities where the company does not have operational control are not included in this scope. We move to non-stationary emissions. Or in other words, reporting on what your transportation used. Again, we report data that relates only to directly owned or leased vehicles. Employee vehicles or anything that is subcontracted should not be reported. So for example, we know that our company owns 50 cars that use diesel and 10 trucks that use petrol. If we know the consumption level, 
we enter the data in the calculator. We check the box for diesel and enter the consumption level and then choose the unit. If we don't know the real consumption data, we can calculate emissions in two ways. We know the distance the car has traveled or we know how much we spent for the fuel. Option one, we know the distance our trucks traveled. We provide information on the type of vehicle, passenger car, van or truck, and next to the type of the car, uh, indicate the number of kilometers traveled. Option two, we know how much money we spent. So we provide expenses related to specific types of fuel in a reporting year. It is not related to type of car. So let's say we spent 150,000 euros on expenses. It is important to remember that if organizations' vehicles, for example, electric cars or plug-in hybrids, use electricity, the calculation of the electricity used in the vehicles and the corresponding GHG emissions should be considered under scope 2 or indirect emissions. Now we move to fugitive emissions. Fugitive emissions come from topping up of refrigerants. Let's say that we have a freezer, there was a leak, and we had to top up half of kilogram of R600 refrigerant. Choose the name from the drop-down list. Enter the amount. If we do not need to top up during the reporting year, we simply leave this unfilled. Now, if your company operates in the agricultural industry, you will be asked to provide more data. If no, continue to scope to sheet by pressing the button. If your company does operate in the field of agriculture, select yes and additional fields will appear. Firstly, to calculate emissions resulting from enteric fermentation, manure management, and organic fertilizer. Please provide the number of animals in specified categories. Please do not leave a blank space. If you do not have animals in a specified category, put zero, and then correspondingly provide the percentage of manure that goes into the field. Secondly, put in the fertilizer levels according to categories to calculate soil nutritious oxide emissions. If you did not use any fertilizer, you can leave this unfilled. Once we filled all relevant data, we move on to sheet scope 2. As covered before, the scope 2 emissions cover purchased electricity, steam, heat, or cooling throughout company premises, irrespective if they are owned, leased, or rented. Firstly, evaluate whether you have yearly consumption data of electricity. If you do, you can fill the information, but you can also estimate your emissions from electricity by providing the amount paid. 
The first column will appear automatically as you have chosen this in the information tab. Fill in the number and choose the unit you present the number in. If you purchase electricity from renewable electricity sources, for example, solar or wind, or consume all self-generated renewable electricity, indicate the amount of electricity that came from those sources. It is important to mark whether you have proof that the electricity comes from renewable energy sources. If you do not know if the electricity comes from renewable sources, simply leave this blank or put a zero in the box. For example, our company operates in two countries, Lithuania and Latvia. We know that in Lithuania we used 1000 megawatts But in Latvia, you know that you spend 50,000 euros for renewable electricity. Choose Latvia. You see that you have signed a contract and the guarantee of origin, but then you don't know the consumption, which means you have to enter the number for estimation. Let's say 50,000 euros. Next, we move to calculating emissions from heating. If you know the real consumption data, fill that in and choose the appropriate unit. If you do not have the data, you can estimate it by providing the total floor area. It is important to remember that this applies to bought energy, for example, district heating. For solutions like a heating boiler that is installed in your premises and provides heat using electricity, its emissions will be represented within the electricity consumption or estimation numbers. Or if the boiler uses natural gas or other fuels, it will be accounted under fuel consumption in scope 1. So, for example, we don't know how much kilowatts we used, but we know that our total floor area for the operation is 1,000 square meters. We choose that it is applicable. We don't know the real consumption data. Therefore, we go and enter estimation by floor area. For cooling, it is important to remember that cooling is not chilled water purchased from a local chiller or air conditioning unit, cases encountered, for example, in rented offices. Note that we can only estimate emissions from heating and not from cooling or steam energy. And now we can move to the report. Your emissions data will be presented in the report sheet. By adding information consistently in the previous sheets, you will see the results of emissions. If any error messages are visible, be sure to go back to the indicated sheet and check the information input. You will see the amount of total emissions and the division between scopes 1 and 2. Additionally, there are elements that allow you to judge how much information was based on actual data and estimates and visual charts to help you see the breakdown of emission sources. Now, your results are complete. Let's see what's next. Getting the information on scope 1 and 2 emissions is important, but the work is not done yet. If you have not done so, calculate scope 3 emissions. By gathering data and seeing it through the emission scope lenses, you can see where your company's largest impact is and you can set targets to reduce it. By developing an action plan with defined responsibilities, you can ensure progress towards minimizing your impact. Additionally, you can communicate the results and your journey towards an environmentally friendly and sustainable way of working. Transparency about your progress is an important part of the sustainability journey.